What's up, YouTube? Today we're going to have a look at autoplay and three different ways I use it in my tracks. So let's get right to it. Let's hear some examples. So yeah, um, the most common way uh, I've seen people use autoplay and similar devices is to chuck it on a FM patch like so, like this one. The reason being it just simplifies the whole process of um, creating FM patterns. Um, I do it also all the time. So let's have a little rundown of the actual plugin. So what we have here is a note probability. This determines how often or if a note will play. These are the timing allocations. So it's going to be, and then we have a, a multiplier over here. So if we set it to one, this means that 50% chance of 132 timing to play, 50% uh, chance that a 16th is going to play, 1 8th and 1 4th and so on. Then we have length processing for the gate. I'm just going to change this back. Um, oh yeah, uh, the time multiplier uh, determines, uh, well, will change these types. So this will mean that this is now a 1 16th, 1 8th, 1 4th and half a bar. And then you have it up to 64. So I think it's like, I don't know, 16 or 32 bars or something like that. Um, then you have the length processing. Um, you have a minimum length, uh, gate length set to 11% in this case. And then you have a random knob. So this means that it will randomize everything between 11% and up to 71%. If I set to 100, it's going to be 100%, but never go below 11%. Then you have uh, the same type of processing, but for velocity. And then you have uh, pitch processing, which is basically transpose probability. How, uh, how often will, will it transpose? And, uh, and then uh, which note or how, and how often will it transpose to, for example, the number six or number two or number one and so on. This is semitones, if I'm not mistaken. So... Uh, then you have a scale selector here. So if you choose like, I don't know, Arabian scale, it's going to highlight those notes that are in that particular scale. And then you have transpose octaves, so up to five octaves up. So let's turn that off for now. So what you basically saw before, um, as I already said, this is mainly... May, my, my main usage for autoplay to create some groove um, and then instead of manually drawing it and then uh, we have it I have it as a fill generator which was this one it's the same principle one note only and then we have like a groove machine or something like that. Um, so 
So for each chain here, each chain has its own autoplay, and I'm gonna explain why in a second. Um, so let's take for example uh, about the about this having one one autoplay in each in each um, chain. Um, if we look at the actual uh, setup of our fill generator here, for example, I have different loops, and each loop. Um, when I chuck my sample inside, my, my drum loop, Ableton is going to slice it. It's going to detect, in this case, the transients, and it's going to slice it. So if it's a very dense drum loop with a lot of transients, um, I need to have an autoplay in each chain because I need to set uh, so the, the autoplay catches all the transients. Because since having it at zero and only 12 chances, it's not going to be able to play all of these slices. So that's why I have to have an, one autoplay for this one, for example. But if we look at the first one, or I think the second one, it's one... Wait, let me zoom out. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, well, thirteen. 13. I can get away with having it at zero, it's not that important. Um, but yeah, that's basically the reason why I have one autoplay per chain. Um, and I did the same for this one as well, um, but then I figured out it's not necessary. So that's why I am now going to show you how you can build a similar rack using this technique. So for starters, you need an autoplay, of course. And you want to set the note chances to 100%, all of them. And then you need to have an instrument rack. Um, and in our instrument rack, we're going to chuck in some simplers. We need to press this one to open up the chain selector over here. And these are chains. So what we want to do now, we want to duplicate it a couple of times. I think six of them is enough for now. Shift click, mark all of them, get that little uh, symbol out and then just drag it across. You wanna right click, distribute ranges equally. And then got a little chain selector over here but we wanna control it somehow. So how do we do that? Well, of course we just hit map, press it and map it to a macro. So now I can turn this around. Pretty cool. So um, yeah, we don't have any source material. So how do we get source material? Well, we either grab some loops or let's be a little bit more creative and make our own. Uh, let's see here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit tab, head over here, and I prepared some random loops or random one-shots, not loops. And uh, double-click into one of them, go down, shift-click and mark all of them. And then you want to uh, enable the launch mode over here and set it to 1 16th. And how do I know it's 1 16th? Well, read the manual or just do the math. 4 16th is one beat. Four beats is one bar. Easy peasy. So this is two bars, two beats, and an eighth, since two sixteenths is an eighth. But uh, yeah, the tutorial is not about teaching music theory or rhythm theory or whatever you call it. I don't even know. Uh, anyway, uh, then you have different algorithms. You have any other, any other. So it's the same. So um, you can have it set to like any, any. This means that any sample will play at any given time after each sample has been played in the clip. But I want it to have a little bit different, so I'm going to have any other. And uh, watch what happens when we record this. Nothing, because I haven't hit played. So, press play. <laughs> just randomly chooses samples. B. 
bit chaotic, but it's quite a fun process actually. It's all about enjoying the process, right? And that's enough material. So we're gonna grab this. Chuck it in here. And we're gonna remove the silence. And I'm gonna chop up one bar long. And then we're gonna go back into our simpler over here. Let's just minimize this for a little bit. And I wanna close. Okay, never mind. Or hide. Yeah, hide that one. So we have the first chain. So let's just grab a loop over here. Oh, I forgot. Uh, sorry. We need to consolidate it. Because we don't need the actual full loop. It's going to be easier for us to see how Ableton treated all the transients and such. So it's going to help us clean up the sample if it's needed. That's why I'm consolidating everything after I chopped it up. So let's go back. So let's grab a sample now, for example. Um, there we go. Set it to slice. It's going to slice by the transients. You can try different ones. You can even have it in manual, but I don't want to do that. Go to the next one. Set it to slice. Next one, maybe grab that one. Slice. Press slice or skära as we say in Swedish. Maybe slice again, of course, or skära igen as we say in Swedish. And then we have the last one. I think I already picked that one. Nope, I didn't. So yeah, now we have our little groove machine or whatever we want to call it. I don't even know how to describe this type of sounds, but um, the principle is pretty much the same as I did with the fill generator, except we don't need an autoplay in each chain. So let's audition how it sounds. You can delete these. And if I wanted to play more often, I can do something like this. Maybe I only want an eighth timing. Maybe I want to mix it a little bit, so you play one eighth and a beat. Maybe sometimes I want a little bit of 16 to like give a little feel of roll or syncopated a little bit. So yeah, that's basically it. Um, as always, just use your imagination and come up with your own racks, maybe. Um, this is how I would do it. Um, I think my favorite one is using it with the leads and use it as a fill generator. Because I've seen tons of other ways to make a fill generator. But uh, I believe this one takes the least amount of time. Unless you use uh, loops of it. 
And there's nothing wrong with losing straight up loops as is, but sometimes you just want to make it unique and make it sound a little bit more like your own. Um, and this is a quick way to do it. Um, it fits my workflow at least. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'm going to leave the link in the description for where you can get autoplay and also where you can get Mute Productions um, Vital Pack because um, that's where I got the lead from. So yeah, um, cheers or skål as we say in Swedish. <laughs>